Hey guys, welcome back to the channel or welcome to the channel. We're back again with another product and this one was sent to us again from our friends over at B Topper. This is the CLB 260, the moving head that is very popular in the game right now, a 260 watt light output source only coming in at 13.67 pounds. We're gonna open this thing. I'm gonna show you the physical characteristics and describe what this light is capable of. And then we're gonna hook it up to the DMX operator and shine it right here and show you everything that this thing does. One thing I will tell you, this is not a sponsored video. This is not a paid promotion video. B Topper sent this to us for our own honest opinion. So everything that you hear on here will be strictly my own opinion. Now I will tell you this as well, I will put a link down in the description where you can purchase uh, this exact light if you like it. The link will be my affiliate link, so I will tell you if you purchase it through that link, I do own, uh, earn a small commission off of that just to get that out there. So let's uh, take this out of the box and take a look at it. All right, so the box is pretty good in size. It's not too huge of a box, which is always good. That tells you that it's not too big of a light on the inside, right? So right off the bat, you've got the uh, owner's manual, the user manual. You have a safety cable and you have a mounting bracket with all your nuts and bolts and that you need to mount that. I'm gonna go ahead and get this light out of here. And like I said, it is 13.67 pounds. There is a power cord in there, power con cable. And there it is. As you can see, um, compared to my hand, this is not a good size light. Uh, I'll read you all the specs, of course, uh, once we get into it. You can see the B-Topper logo there. This is considered a Neo 3, the CLB 260. This uses the, if I remember right, the Osram. Uh, I have to look that up. Yeah, so this uses the Osram bulb. We had uh, somebody comment on our Instagram post the other day, what type of bulb does it use? It is called the Osram bulb. I don't know too many facts about that kind of bulb, guys, but that's what they call it. Um, so let's take a dive uh, deep into this. So I want to show you what it looks like when you power it up. Um, just on initial startup, we're going to be using the Jackery out here just so I don't have to run super long extension cords. And the reason I want to show you this is because we've been sent some lights from other companies in the past that never got past the warm up stage. So I just want to kind of give you a preview of how quick it warms up. So as you can see, that's it. Um, it's already warmed up. It's already in its initial stage. It's got 001 as the address on the front screen. Now I will tell you that this is in 12 channel mode right off the bat. So we're gonna go through the menu and just kind of see how many modes it has, what kind of settings you can go through to manually operate this thing. And then we'll hook it up to the DMX operator. All right, so here we are in the main menu. You guys can obviously see this is a beautiful, uh, lit screen on the front of this thing. Uh, the Osram, which is abbreviated here for the bulb, the CLB 260, uh, telling you the model of the light. So you've got your up arrow, your down, your left and right, and your OK button, obviously, as you enter. On the screen here, it does tell you that it's in 12 channel mode and that the lamp is off. Uh, CLB 260, and that this unit is currently in slave mode. 
So to get to the menu, you're gonna press the left arrow and now you're in the main menu. So from here, you can go through and set your address, which, okay, so I'm guessing the right arrow is for enter. And you can go in here and set your address according to your software or your DMX operator, whichever one you're running. Uh, run mode. So I'm guessing the OK button is not your enter button. The right is to actually get into there. So right now it's in DMX 512. You can put it in auto, sound, or test mode. I'm not going to put it in any of those modes right now because I don't want to blind myself. Um, so master slave right now it is in slave or you can put it in auto. Now here's where you can take manual control of it. You can do a, a fine pan, a fine tilt. Um, you can adjust it whether you want it inverted on the pan or tilt. So you can go through your full menu here. Um, you've got your speed, your strobe, your dimmer, and your colors, which I don't know of anybody that would be manually doing this at a party. But I guess if worse came to worse, you would, right? So your settings, um, like again, you can do your pan invert, your tilt invert. So depending on if you have it hanging from a ceiling or truss, or if you had it um, upright on a truss, right? So they've got these great handles on both sides for you to put it up on top of trussing. Tilt invert, uh, pan tilt, uh, what is that? Pan tilt feedback, not sure what that is. Data hold, sound sensitivity, which is great to have. So you can, depending on how sensitive you want it to pick up sound, you got your lamp switch, your lamp state, which will tell you how many hours and stuff that has been run on it. And then that's pretty much it, guys. So your display, I'm sure you could turn it on or off, the language, the screen saver, or the screen reverse. So if you're hanging this upside down, you can actually flip the screen so that you can see it when it's hanging from, a, from an object like trussing or a ceiling. Basic information about it, right? Fixture status, the version, the light time, how much total runtime you've had on this thing. Um, and then, of course, reset. Uh, if you want to just totally reset everything, if you forgot or if you messed up something within the light that you just want to do a redo on it. So that's pretty much the menu. It's, it's super simple. Like I said, it's got the great feet on the bottom. It's got the dual handles for picking this up. And as you can see here, 13 pounds, that's not heavy at all. Uh, so it looks like it's made out of like an ABS plastic. And I'll tell you this right now, I do kind of like this matte finish. I like it so that um, it's not shiny. If other lights are hitting it, it's not creating like a glare or anything. And I like that they use regular uh, Phillips head screwdrivers instead of Torx head or something like that. Something that you would never have on you. Basic warnings here and on the back, I'm gonna show you the back real quick. So you see we've got our power con plugged in. You've also got power con out. So if you wanna link this to another light or another one of these lights, you can. You've got your 10 amp fuse uh, access port here, your DMX in and your DMX out. So uh, I'm not gonna be testing it with the Donners today. I'm gonna to use just a straight up DMX cable. I'm pretty sure it would work though, but I'm glad that you have the linking here, the DMX in, DMX out, so that you can uh, go to another light, say if you had it super close to it on a trussing or something. So let's get the DMX operator out. Let's hook it up, go through the channels and see how bright this thing is. All right guys, so this is take two of the B Topper CLB 260. Uh, we were gonna hook it up the other night. My DMX operator after 12 years broke. Uh, one of the sliders on it totally broke off, I guess from carrying it. Over the course of 12 years, it broke off. So I ordered um, this little $54 uh, DMX controller. It looks exactly like the American DJ DMX operator. Uh, so it should operate just the same. I've got the manual here with all the channels on it, but it is on. I'm not sure if you guys can hear that. It is quite a loud fixture. Uh, 260 watts. I'm sure it's got to cool this thing off. It's got a bright light coming out the top of this. And it is very, this is a very hot fixture. I will tell you this, if you're transporting these in bags, uh, we use the Ariba bags. I would say power these off at the end of your event first so that these things could cool down uh, because I wouldn't want to put these in a bag right after um, the event, like as soon as I get in there. So uh, this is operating in 12 channel mode and I've got you guys off to the side just so you can see my background here, which is where I will be projecting. 
And so 12 channel mode, the first channel is obviously going to be our pan. It is very smooth and very responsive, very sensitive. Channel two is going to be the fine pan. So you can barely see it moving. Like if I just had to get it just right, channel three will be my tilt. It is pretty quick, which is uh, really good. This is a uh, fine tilt, which I don't understand fine tilt guys. I mean, it barely moves like a degree. Uh, channel five is gonna be my pan tilt speed. So how fast it goes around there. Channel six is gonna be my dimmer. So that's going to be brought up as um, a full open on channel six. And then when I bring up channel seven, this is going to be my strobe. So all the way down is totally off. It kind of doesn't make sense. But um, and as I move it up, you can see it strobing faster, faster. It's not really responsive with this DMX controller. Uh, let me go ahead and throw this out there. I do have the Wolfmix WMX1. I just have yet to learn it and have yet to use it. I'm sure it's a lot more responsive with a sophisticated controller such as that compared to this $54 controller. Um, now, here's the thing. I was gonna learn the, the Wolf Mix to control this and do this demo for you guys. However, B Topper is not listed in the WMX1 yet. It is also not listed in the My DMX Go. I tried that too. So you have to go into the Wolf Mix and manually input every channel into the WMX one. And I just wasn't gonna do that. I figured, let me just use this. This will work for now, right? So as I bring it up, you can see that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and tilt this over to the garage so you can see. Guys, this light is very, very bright. I don't know if you can actually tell the intensity from where uh, through the camera but it is very right very bright okay so where were we at we were at channel three uh, we're bringing that in the fine and then this is oh yeah the, the speed so this will determine the speed of this let me get this back in so how fast this goes if i have it all the way down it moves really fast all the way up, it's gonna move really slow as you can see that right there. It's taking its time. So that's kind of cool if you wanna have like a program like a slow dance to make it move really. I'm gonna put it somewhere in the middle so that we get kind of a, a middle speed. I like that. So we don't need to mess with that. And then channel eight is gonna be our color wheel. So we're gonna go through the colors. We have white, which is obviously all the way down at the bottom, red, green, I guess that's blue, yellow, fuchsia, pink. It's going through all the different aquas. And then as you can see here, look at this. So you get kind of a color mixing right there, which is nice. And as you get up here, you can kind of color mix. All the way up here until they totally color mix. And you can see them kind of cycling. I'm gonna cut this overhead light off so we can get a better Look at this. I'm gonna leave a little light on in here, but cut the main lights off so this looks a lot brighter. We're gonna go over to bank two and channel nine looks like it is the gobo. So we can go through all these gobos here, shakes. As you get higher in the numbers, of course, it's gonna shake the gobo, which is a cool effect. Um, scrolling gobo, I like that. Super fast. But look at that, it's kind of like the color wheel gobo effect going through that. And as you get to the very top, it's gonna to just shake through them all. I kind of like a slower motion, I like that. Let's see what channel 10 is. So channel 10, that's kind of nice. And I'm, I'm, about, I'm about six and a half feet from that garage door. So you can just imagine the further away from a dance floor you are, it's gonna be a lot bigger. So channel nine, of course, like we said, is your gobo. Channel 10 will be your prism. Prism rotation to fast. But what I don't understand, I guess that's a true prism. Let's, let's go through these. Channel 11, no, nah, this is what I like about this fixture. This is your frost. So as I come up, I can frost this mono, this gobo. 
And look at that. You get like a true wash. I really like that effect. And as I come back down, the prism makes its way back into there, the gobo. And then the last channel, channel 12 will be, um, this is just your control of everything, right? So this, uh, you can turn the lamp off, you can uh, do a reset on it. So channel 12 is really kind of just open. But what I want to discuss is, I don't think it has like a true prism. I'm looking for like a facet prism, like a three facet prism. And maybe that's it because I see him kind of scrolling through it. So not to uh, blind you or anything, but let me bring this back around. You could just see how smooth this operates. And five is my speed, like I said. I can make it go really slow or I can come all the way down and make it super fast. I have to be honest, this is a very loud fixture. I'm sure you're probably picking this up through my microphone. Um, hopefully it's not interfering with it. Let me turn this, uh, this other light off. But the colors on this thing are just phenomenal. As you can see right there, super quick. Let me bring this down. Oops, wrong way. Super fast. I have it on really quick right now. This is a really great fast move. But I, as I said, if I put this all the way up and then I turn it, I want you to see something right here. So I am all the way up and I've got it on the slowest speed and I'm all the way up. If I come all the way down real quick, it's gonna go back the other way, super slow. But it's very stable. There's no shaking on it. I like that. So let me bring it about halfway again. And as you can see, it's making its way. I should have brought a haze machine, but um, I didn't think about that. Change colors. This thing is super bright, guys. I really like this light. So let me just turn this light back on real quick. Overall, this is a great light. It's super bright. I love the gobo effects. I love the frost effect. I could see myself using that for sure. So yeah, guys, overall, great. Let me get up close to this thing. You can hear this thing. It's humming. Uh, like I said, 260 watts, so it's going to produce some power. So full power con in, DMX in, DMX out, and you got a power con out as well. Uh, if this was a American DJ or a Chave light, I'm sure that would be programmed into the Wolf Mix. But B Topper hasn't made it into their software yet, so I would have to manually go in and input every channel of what this light does. And I will do that. I'll get to it. Um, I would love to use this at an event, but uh, our friends over at B-Topper um, are only sending us one light at a time, so I've never used just one moving head. Uh, so maybe in the future they'll send me another one, I'll program these things and I'll use them at an event, and that could be a later video. So I will put a link where you can purchase this light if you like it, if you want to check it out for yourself. Uh, the link in the description will be my affiliate link. So if you purchase it through that link, I will earn a small commission off of that. But just want to thank you guys for tuning in. This is the COB 260, 260 watt output, 13.7 pounds, fairly light, durable plastic, B topper. This is the Neo 3. Thanks so much for tuning in. Like the video, share the video with a fellow DJ. And if you're not a subscriber, we'd love to have you guys. It's really helping the channel. We've got a lot more products coming in that we're going to review on the channel that are DJ related or gig log related. Stuff that's coming in is stuff like cameras and, and uh, vlogging accessories. And we'll be reviewing those because those obviously help us DJs out recording our events. So we'll see you on the next video. Thanks again. But wait, there's more. All right, guys. So we're back in the garage. This is day three. I know I ended the video with I should have brought a haze machine or a fog machine, but now um, after thinking about it at the end of the last portion of this video, I went and picked up my haze machine and 
I've got a little bit of haze going right now. You can kind of see the beams. It looks fantastic. But what I want to do is put out some more haze and show you guys what this thing looks like with full haze. So I'm just going to haze the garage out here and you can already see the beams that it's making. This thing looks great. 260 watt output. And it is just blowing. And I moved the table back a little bit too so we can get a little bit better look at this. I'm going to change some colors for you guys. Go red. I love this purple color. But that haze is really shooting through that. And I like haze better than fog, just because it's not as dense. It just gives it a light uh, effect. We go through all the cycles here, but you could just see this beam that it is creating here. This blue is pretty deep. I kind of like this cycle color, this yellow and blue. But this beam is thick. I mean, you guys can see this. And I actually probably want to bring you around to this side just so you can kind of see what it looks like. So there you go. I have it on about half uh, strong output. The hazer that we are using is the Mark uh, Haze 800. The Mark M-A-R-Q Haze 800. I think this thing has been discontinued since, but it has been a great asset to us at venues that we can actually use haze. Now we are using the froggies uh, scent in it and I think I have like cotton candy in there so it, it really smells good. I want to bring you guys around this way just so you can see. If you're able to use haze or fog at your events, I highly suggest, suggest it. I mean look at this pattern that we're getting here. I mean, you talk about a strong beam of light that we are just shooting out of this fixture. Once again, this is the CLB 260 from B Topper. Uh, they sent this out to us so that we could review it for the channel, let you guys see it in action, but I'm digging that. Keep changing colors here. This purple is pretty deep. And I'm going to go up and down. Once again, I'm at the lowest setting. I want you guys to see this. It is creating a nice beam on here. Keep going through the colors. Go through a few of the gobos. I like that one. I can imagine, and I did scoot the table back, so now I'm about a good 10, about 10 to 12 feet from the, uh, the garage door right there. We'll slow it down. Put it into a single beam of light. And there is that frost again. So you can actually frost it and then go through the colors. And even the frost has a nice, uh, a nice beam. It's like a wash, so it has a nice beam even with the haze. I'm gonna let out some more haze here. Let's go to solid white. That would be cool for a first dance. It's kind of strobing effect. Bring that back down to uh, we'll speed this up a little bit, but that is solid white right there. And just look at this beam pattern. 
the B Topper COB260 dig in this light. And if they send me another one of these, I will use this at a upcoming wedding and do a full review of this. But like I said, I never use just one moving head. That would just look silly to me, but there it is guys. That is the COB260 with haze. The thing looks amazing. Cycle through all these colors, do like a color flash. That is cool looking. Yep, so once again, guys, that is the COB260 from B Topper. Thanks so much to our friends over there for sending this light out to us. I'm really hoping we get to use this at an upcoming event if we add another one um, to the fleet. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, once again, we'd love to have you here on the channel. We're gonna be doing a bunch of different reviews on products such as lighting, uh, vlogging equipment, and hopefully some DJ speakers coming up here soon. So uh, we'll let you know on that. But hit that uh, subscribe button, smash that thumbs up, and share it with a friend. We'll see you on the next one.